But the other issue, Chair, that uh, we want to, to flag as well, you would note, and I remember this was even when the, I was still a chairperson of telecoms, um, there was some investigation around the project itself uh, in terms of the conduct of some officials at USASA, and then there was a, a, a investigation in terms of the manufacturers themselves. But again, I need to highlight that Competition Commission has also come in uh, there have been investigation, collusion in terms of the project, uh, and we are expecting a report quite soon in terms of that. Um, I have received a letter from the Competition Commission that requested us not to proceed with any procurement around that, and therefore there seem to be some level of uh, need for answers from the people who were involved in the project. So we'll wait for that report. It will guide us as well. But we are not waiting completely because if you look at the presentation, I just want to highlight, what we are worried about is to get the nation on board on the project, one. Uh, so we'll announce a start date and an end date of registration. So it can continue to be an open-ended. But part of the issues that we had to do is to pro put a project plan in place, and then the team DG will deal with that. Put the project plan in place, but put a project office. We literally now have an office, a boardroom, we call it a war room for DTT. I meet with the entire team across the value chain. We have representative of Treasury, we have representative of DTI, we have representative of all the entities that, that are impacted on the project. Every Monday, 7 o'clock, we've made that commitment because we're saying the delay on the project necessitates for us that we can't treat it as normal anymore. So that is part of just saying, let's get this on the ball, let's get running. And so that weekly, the easy report we tick. There's this task that needs to be done this week. Once it's done, we come back on Monday and say, tick. This is what we've done. So we think we are now ready in terms of our work. Um, Chair, out of the rollout in the SK area, there are lessons that we have learned. Lessons learned is that we anticipated 23,000 households to be registered. We ended up with 26. This is because the policy says you are migrating TV-owning households. Now, when communities hear that there's this project that the government is involved in, those 3,000 households which did not have a TV went and purchased a TV either in a pawn shop and all that. Now, you ended up with an obligation to cover them as well. So what we have done in the process of review which you'll see. I want to speak to this because you might see the numbers changing. I don't want people to think that maybe we are not understanding what we do. So out of that experience, we went back to Stats SA to say then give us the figures in terms of how many households do we have in the country? One, how many households are earning 3,200 and below in the country? Then we were given a figure overall. And then we said out of that as well, how many households are TV owning? Now, if you look at that, households that are TV owning that are earning 3,200 and below are almost 5 million. But if but you are in to include those who do not own a TV, then you come to 7 million households. So that's the real figures that we're looking at. We had to go and ask for a legal opinion. Are we obligated as the department to also cover this 2 million that doesn't have TV households. The, the legal opinion says yes, we are obligated. Because some of the areas, not that people don't want to have TV, they have not had a TV because there's not been a signal in the area. Therefore, they did not bother to have a TV. So with this migration, if you have a set-top box and you are in that area, you receive signal. So those people, we assume they will have an interest in having TV. Therefore, it will put an obligation on us. So that figure has changed. So that's why I'm upfront explaining it, Chair, so that colleagues can understand where there will be changes. And fortunately, that's why I'm saying the last presentation that was done in Parliament for both the committees, uh, I'm pulling from that in looking at the issues. I think I will allow Chair, uh, the acting DG, together with um, the project manager, 
to take us through the project, um, uh, the presentation. I think they will they will share. I'm not so sure. They will they will share amongst themselves in terms of who takes that, and then we can respond to to the questions. Thanks. Maybe let, let me say up front, uh, we've got Mr. TT as the acting DG of the department, uh, Chairperson. We are of or cognizance of the concerns of the committee around the appointment uh, process. We are really trying to rush getting that, but there are some, some challenges that we have here. Mr. Tabiso TT, T-H-I-T-I, TT. Thanks, Chair. Um, the, the presentation will have the following. One is the high-level overview, which is mainly a reflection from what was last presented and what has been achieved so far. We'll then look in terms of the setup box procurement and distribution, implementation rollout phases, challenges and mitigating factors, the roadmap towards achieving the deadline of 2019, and reflect on the risk and issues associated with us meeting the target of 2019 as anticipated. And will be just presentation on the funding requirements and we'll talk about some of the key enablers. <coughs> Honorable Chair, on the on the issue of on the issue of the transmission network which was supposed to have been presented in the previous time is that the assessment that we made was that from the 87.3 percent of South Africans will be able to receive DTT and the balance of 12.7 will be covered through DTH uh, and in terms of the digital broadcast content there there are all three channels of SABC and the news who are live on the DTT and we have uh, also additional channels from e ETV and furthermore, there are 18 radio stations that will be able to be accessed through the, the, the completion of the process. In the previous uh, engagement, the issue was around the compliance with the National uh, Bureau of Standards. From the manufacturer side, uh, it, was, it was ensured and double-checked that they all complied with the published standards. And therefore, we, we were in a position to roll out the subsidized set-top boxes distribution in some of the areas. Um, key issues to consider is that there are total, there's a total of about 15.1 million households, and out of that, 12 million of them are owning sets, uh, TV sets. Um, and out of that, the the, the government committed to migrate about 5 million uh, with subsidization of uh, set of box kits and installation. And we then discovered that there's an additional 2.5 million households owing TV sets that did not, that, that, that do not qualify and were not included in the previous uh, statistical presentations. And in addition to that, which Minister reflected on, is that there is an additional of 3 million households who do not own TV sets who needs to be considered for the migration. In terms of the budget, uh, 2.5 that was allocated, 2.45 billion that was allocated, only 1.5 million set of box kits and installation and all through the value chain could be afforded. Uh, USASA has ordered the 1.5 between 2014 and 2015 and to date 851 720,000 kits have been delivered and their warehouse at SAPO and out of that there are about 475 that are outstanding and the rest have been rolled out and so far we have covered almost 563,677 registration. The number might, Im might appear to be insignificant, but this is because of the following reasons. The first phase was to cover the SK area. The second one was to cover the borderline area. Uh, and now we're moving into national rollout after we have covered those because those are the key issues that were very critical at the time. Um, in, in terms of 
the SK area, we have managed to cover 23,661 installation. And in that particular area, the, in the SK area, the analog broadcast has been switched off. In terms of taking the process forward to, in terms of the rollout plan, we have developed three phases. One is the short term, medium term, and long term. In terms of the first term, we need to clear the already procured set-up boxes that are in, in the SAPO warehouses. But the target will be around the predominantly flat provinces along, along borders of Free State and Northwest and also continue with registration of indigent families to ensure that at least by June we have integrated data that we are going to work on to include the second phase and third phase. In terms of the, the medium term, we need to look at acquiring some of the additional DTH decoders because there are some areas where we have DTH um, uh, signal processes being concluded, but the only outstanding issues are around the set-up boxes. In the long term, we need to reflect on the new procurement of devices to ensure that we cover the remainder of, of the provinces, and we need to ensure that we conclude the rollout of the remainder in the borderland and inland by June 2019. In terms of the challenges, we have serious issues around uh, resources that Minister alluded to, to a point where we have been juggling between different entities uh, to seek assistance to ensure that some of the processes are not halted. The absence of DTH devices is one of them that we'll be looking at to ensure that we address it as quick as we can. But some of the challenges what Minister spoke about in terms of project management, where we had not clarified the start and end of registration to the public to ensure that we can have real integrated data to ensure that our planning is done correctly to meet the deadline of 2019. In terms of implementation and, and dealing with some of the, of the, of the challenges, <coughs> what we need to to what, what we have done so far is to develop a broader coordination mechanism and partnership with some of the entities to ensure that we can align and better coordinate the resources to meet the deadline. Uh, we have started the discussions around uh, soliciting advice on the new procurement model to look into what the Competition Commission have raised before. Um, we have also developed a fast tracking mechanism with intensified awareness program through various platforms to ensure that we increase both registration and include some of the key stakeholders in the process. Uh, what we are going to do further is to look in terms of the use of existing qualified installers with the collaboration with the municipalities to, ins to ensure that there's ownership of the process and also to fast track the completion of the training with DPW on the installer program. Minister raised certain issues that I think we, we need to look at, uh, which are around one, the constitutional issues, and two, the technological challenges or technological evolution. One of the key issues is that while the, the current scheme takes care of indigent household, it to some extent have an exclusive element to it where you cannot cover for those who only have TVs and exclude those who don't have TVs because of importance is to ensure that we create uh, or afford universal access of information to all that require to get it. <clears throat> that comes to a point where out of the previous assessment we got to understand that there are 3.1 million households without television sets who needs to be covered in the whole uh, set of boxes and uh, digital migration. Other challenges uh, that we might have to look at and manage them carefully is around the realities that the the current analog uh, services is gradually being uh, phased out throughout the world. There are certain considerations, for instance, we have digital TV becoming uh, one of the de facto technology for consumers. And we also have integrated digital television sets emerging as a default choice for viewing by others. 
And on the basis of that, it is therefore proposed that we have a consideration to issue ID TVs for poor households who currently don't have TV sets in place of set-up boxes, because you'll then be addressing two issues. One is a provision of a set for universal access and also provision of content through the set-up boxes. Uh, it is also it is also being proposed that we, we, we consider the the the, the current TV owning houses to ensure that the subsidy covers those eligible and also we ensure that in that particular process we come up with a policy decision to say whether are we looking at the set of boxes to continue or we're going to look at IDTVs as the alternative. In terms of how we're going to move process going forward we have developed a public-private partnership process where we collaborate with the private sector, commercial broadcasters to expedite the implementation rollout. Uh, we, we are going to engage with them to utilize their distributing channels and marketing platforms of the industry to post both registration and rollout. Uh, we have also started engaging with the TV manufacturers to ensure that there could be consideration of production of uh, low-cost IDTVs to ensure that we can cover uh, what we need to look in terms of those indigent and those who don't have TVs. Um, in terms of uh, some of the issues that we are going to look at is to with the with with some of our partners is to look in terms of how do we create education and public awareness campaigns, and also how do we strengthen the distribution networks, which mainly have to be credible and auditable so that we ensure that through those particular networks, those who ought to receive are in actual fact those who are supposed to receive the, the, the DTT uh, subsidies. Um, one of the issues is that the, the overall objective is to migrate household beyond 85% threshold across the country through government subsidy to enable switch off of analog services in line with the 2019 deadline. And to ensure that in our policy approach, we, we, we include procurement and installation of the remaining 3.5 million households that were not covered before, uh, and also augmenting of department resources by means of enhancing the private-public partnership in areas of marketing and human resource management. And What we are going to do now as new institutional arrangement is that the minister will announce the registration period for the qualifying household. That will be done through a number of media platforms. Uh, we'll ensure that the local registration teams and installers on the ground um, are in areas where the local municipalities and, the, and some of the key stakeholders at different levels participate in the whole process and will also ensure that we, we, we strengthen the oversight mechanism in ensuring that the process is, is, is smooth and it does not exclude anyone in collaboration with other stakeholders. Of important is that we need to reflect on the funding for project management public education and consumer awareness to assist Centec with their own uh, dual elimination processes, establishment of the contact center to ensure that those who apply and when they need to follow up, they have uh, an entry and exit point of information, uh, procurement of migration devices for both IDTVs and set-top boxes, uh, distribution of devices and installation of devices and activation of services in all the areas. Um, Chair and Honourable Members, that's the, the summary of our budget. In total, what we need to date is 6 billion 602 million for us to be able to conclude the, the, the whole digital migration for, for 2019 June. There are certain things that I think we need to reflect on that we need to ensure that they are in place that for instance the funding of of the procurement process needs to be concluded before June 2018 
and you also need to ensure that we deliver the first batch of devices uh, in line with our project plan starting in July 2018. Uh, we also need to ensure that we create a clear and simple message for targeted audience to ensure that everyone who ought to hear the message about registration are part of the messaging. We are going to use community radio station, television platforms, uh, and where possible we are going to ensure that the private sector assist us with resources such as marketing material to ensure that we communicate to those who need to get the message. We are going to get promotion material with clear digital migration message with start day to end day throughout government platforms. We are going to use community development workers for registration of household through local registration. And we are going to create a reliable database and adequate number of installers through partnership with the local municipalities as I've indicated. Thank you. Thanks, um, Acting DG. Anything, Minister? Members? We are fine, we'll take the questions. Yeah. I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll engage on, on, on the presentation. But on the, on the, on the issues of uh, informing the citizens, on what we are doing. I hear the, the public education and consumer awareness uh, and your desire to partner with uh, a number of people. But are there no other avenues uh, whilst you are engaging uh, those people? For instance, there is Parliament. Uh, uh, one, one of the issues that we rely on is what we are doing because as you speak now, you speak to the public, except that um, you are very soft. Um, so that uh, what, what you say uh, is beamed out there. So if, if we can also check what can we do with, with Parliament uh, resources of communication, uh, I think for me it will it will assist as you are trying to deal with uh, uh, other uh, private people. You are communication, so uh, you really need to communicate uh, what we are we are trying to do as the department members. Any question, Honourable Van Dijk? Van Dam, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, Minister, just a question about um, Mr. Muslaloha. So what is his current status now? Is he, has he been serving as the Chair? Because um, Parliament approved the appointment in November. So I, I wasn't clear about what's happened since then. Has he been at work? Has he been drawing a salary? Where is he now? I understand that you're waiting for the judgment and you want to meet with him. I understand that. I just want to understand where he is right now. And then about DTT, um, I think the Constitutional Court dealt with um, the process around the policy making. So it said that uh, Minister Motambi was right to change the policy because policy making rests with the executive. So it wasn't up to the court to define what the policy should be. It should be that the court said it should be up to the executive. Now, I think it's very important that clarity is given about your position on digital migration because it's very clear that the Minister Mutambi had a specific position, then Minister Vlodlo came in and she had a different position. So right now we're not very clear about what is, what, what's going to happen. So I think it's very important for you as the current minister to be very clear about whether it will be encrypted or unencrypted. Uh, the, the, the court did not say it uh, did not say which um, process must be followed in that regard. They said it's up to the executive to make policy. Um, yeah. On the other hand, Honorable Tzedi and Honorable Trachan. Thank you. Uh, let, let, let me welcome the presentation, but just to 
get clarity on some few issues chair with regard to DTT. The, fa- the, 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 the first one is with regard to that proposal that current TV owning subsidy eligible households be afforded a choice between a, a subsidized STB or IDTV. And the question that comes to my mind is uh, what about those who have already uh, who are already who already have uh, set up boxes as of now what is going to be the situation with regard to that choice that you are proposing the 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 second one chair talks to the issue that we have always been uh, raising uh, because every time uh, we meet at this level the issue of funding uh, arises I think at the level of given the the seriousness of the project, we might have to take a decision, perhaps at the portfolio committee, to have a session with Treasury and deal with this particular challenge. I was looking at the breakdown in terms of uh, how much is required to roll out the whole project. Obviously, the, the, the minister will have to assist in terms of what we have for now and uh, what else is required to effectively ra- roll out the whole project. But all I'm saying is that there is a need uh, to this time around to agree on a meeting uh, with Treasure to deal with this uh, particular challenge. Surely we can't afford to miss the 30 June 2019 target as I let it. The, 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 the second last one is the um, the implications of the uh, dual illumination rollout uh, to Centec, uh, because when I look at the um, the presentation, it, for, of course um, there are some implications in terms of Centec with regard to the process of dual illumination. If you can as well just try and clarify that uh, particular aspect. Look at the faces there. With phase one, uh, the the I only see the the June twenty eighteen as the target that has been set, but I don't see the starting uh, uh, date in terms of when are we like when are we starting with uh, that particular phase. With the rest of the phases two and three, it's very clear as to when are we starting and when are we likely to end. So, so I would appreciate if you can just be clarified as to when exactly are we starting with uh, phase one. Thanks, AJ. Okay, another well, talker. Greetings to everybody and compliments of the season. And thank you for the presentation. Firstly, Um, Public information. Um, I have said it previously and I'm going to say it again. I would like that public or the the public information be spread as wide as possible. Why I'm asking is that people who are deaf don't have access to your information, whether it's on TV or any other kind of information. So I would like access, particularly to TV, must be uh, subtitled or there must be an interpreter. Or, and, you know, in terms of registration, how to get set top boxes, all those messages. Um, and also people with disabilities, pensioners, they receive well below the 3,200 rand income. So they should also qualify, but I, maybe they don't receive this information. So I would like to request, in terms of public information, please let it go out as wide as possible, including people with disabilities. And I'd like to know who assists with the registration process. Is it SAPO? Because you said the community workers but community workers are not all over um, and they don't have access to all people. So who is responsible to do the registration? The resources, the devices, um, it's still analog. So for example, Centec, the Centec devices um, and SABC devices, are they still analog? 
do, do they also still need to be digitalized? And then in the budget on slide 13, um, the technology and te technology support, or there's another line item, Oh, there's another line item somewhere. Um, does that include the entities that need to be digitalized or is that a separate amount? And which means that everything related to digital migration, would, would it be then more than the six billion? Or if you could just give me clarity on that, thank you. Can, can we take that uh, before we, we go to other hands? Thank you. I shall I shall start in the colleagues will assist or obviously. Um just to chair I think we, we take um your your advice we will definitely enhance our communication and I think Dr. Mutuvi will, will come in detail on what we have currently tried to do and it also speaks to what Honorable Member Nivon Drachen has just raised on issue of subtitle. I think he will come to that one. Honorable uh, Fandam, um, Mr. Mutaloha did take office, um, has started, because after the process of parliament, we did uh, do formal appointments. Um, I